To those of you that have been following my story on social media, I um, I had just released yesterday um, the letter from my lawyer that um, explained to me all my legal options and uh, and whether we should move forward with a lawsuit or not. Um, so. And after I released it, I was getting comments and I realized that the letter is really long. And um, so people were kind of commenting on it before they were reading it. So I just wanted to summarize really quickly what had happened. Um, basically, I was charged with a crime I didn't commit. Um, uh, I went through the legal process and uh, the case was dismissed by the judge. He said there, there was nothing to it. And so up until that point, I never felt that anything really was was amiss. I mean, I felt like I shouldn't have been charged with a crime, but but I felt like um, the legal, the, the justice system worked for me. It was after the case was dismissed that things uh, started to happen that led us to where we are now, to where I um, had consulted with an attorney about possibly um, um, having the charge, uh, having a lawsuit filed. Um, so what happened first was, after the charge was dismissed, um, the Maine State Police retaliated against me. Uh, they didn't think that the charge should have been dismissed. I had contacted them and they told me that it was dismissed on a technicality and all the blah, 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 whatever. They decided that they were going to be judge, jury, and executioner. They decided that rather than um, hold to the principle of innocent until proven guilty, I was guilty and there was... Um, there was uh, nothing that I could do to change their mind. They were just going to treat me that way. So they retaliated against me. I had an application to get a professional private investigator's license in the state of Maine, and they denied that. But the reason they denied it, and the only reason they denied it, that's important, the only reason that it was denied was because of what they had charged me with, the, um, the, false, the, you know, the false charge that I had been charged with. That was the only reason which was I worked in Maine without a private investigator's license. So I worked unlicensed in Maine, but that wasn't true. That wasn't true. If you want to know more about that story, just uh, uh, scroll down my, my, my page. There's a video called uh, Maine State Police Violate My Constitutional, Civil, and Human Rights. Um, that video goes into great detail about my whole case. So I'm not going to uh, uh, talk about that again right now. But um, uh, I was charged with a crime that I didn't commit. It was dismissed. They retaliated against me, first by denying my license, um, and uh, at the same time they denied my license, they also contacted some of my clients. Uh, most importantly, my biggest client, which was giving me the majority of my work. Because they contacted my client and told them that I was under an ongoing investigation and th they asked them for lots of uh, documents or whatever, I don't know exactly after they, because uh, the only reason I know about this is because of emails. Um, but the emails indicate that there was a phone conversation and I don't know what happened during that phone conversation. So for I, they could have just been bad mouthing me saying that I was a criminal, whatever. But as a result of that contact with the state police saying that I was under an ongoing investigation, the, um, my biggest client, my client that was giving me over $200,000 a year in work, uh, dropped me off their vendors list. And this happened, uh, you know, three or four years ago now. So we're talking uh, upwards of a million dollars that the Maine State Police has taken away from me uh, in gross revenue as a result of uh, a charge that was dismissed as a result of nothing. Um, so in, in Maine, you're not innocent until proven guilty. Anyway, uh, uh, they retaliated against me that way. They denied my license, so I obviously appealed the license. And when I appealed it, they, uh, they, um, uh, my lawyer had indicated to me that even if we won the appeal, they would, uh, they would file a uh, appeal against that appeal, and this process could go on for three to five, maybe longer. This could go on a long time, and I didn't, I didn't want that. So the lawyer. Um, and at the time, I was a little hesitant to sign this agreement. The lawyer put together an agreement, and uh, I and I went ahead and signed it. Basically, the agreement said that I didn't do anything wrong. I um, I'm not admitting to anything, but um, to make this process go move along faster, I'll go ahead and sign this agreement, withdraw my PI application, 
resubmitted in a matter of time and then it would be approved. So that was the agreement. Um, as I've run that by multiple lawyers, they've all said that was the most amazing agreement that anybody could ever get because um, basically they admitted that you didn't do anything wrong and they were just, you were basically just um, cutting through all the appeals that would have happened and, um, and uh, so that you could get your license quicker. Um, uh, so I went through that uh, uh, appeal process anyway and um, so I decided to release that letter from the lawyer uh, and explain why rather than uh, uh, file a lawsuit I've decided I've opted to post my story on social media and promote it on social media. Um, so basically uh, the lawyer said the information you provided demonstrates that you have been treated unfairly and unprofessionally and have good grounds for your complaints, but in general, the law disfavors lawsuits for money damages against government officials for action taken as part of their job duties. Thus, for you to make a good decision about whether to invest your time and resources in a lawsuit, you need to carefully consider these two practical questions. One, are you likely to prevail in a lawsuit against the state or its employees? That is, are you likely to obtain a judgment that some or all of the defendants are liable, legally responsible, in other words, for their actions based on the specific claims that you've made. And the second question is, if you were to prevail in your lawsuit, what are the legally recoverable damages? So those are very important questions that you had to ask. And then the law lawyer goes on to explain, and I'm not gonna read the entire letter, I'm just taking out uh, sections. Under Maine Tort Claims Act, state government entities and their employees, such as Maine State Police and its officers, have broad immunities from lawsuits alleging damages, alleging damage claims for wrong, wrongful conduct. So, uh, and then it goes on to say that in order to have the best chance of success, you need to file your claim within 180 days of the incident. So. 180 days, you know, uh, that's basically, what, six months, five months, something like that. Uh, it's a very short, short amount of time, especially when in order to um, file the lawsuit, you need to contact attorneys, you need to go through the whole process of setting up meetings with them, getting... Um, their finding, they have to do all their research, they, they get back to you with their findings, and then you're going through the emotional um, process of dealing with the fact that you were just charged with a crime that you didn't commit, you went through the legal process. I mean, this is all a very emotional thing to go through. I'm making this video many years after it happened, or a few years after it happened, so the emotion uh, has kind of left me, and now it's just... Uh, um, a desire to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to somebody else but um, uh, I feel that based on this letter and I'll go on to read some other parts that I wouldn't have had much of a chance of recovering the nearly a million dollars that I've lost in uh, in revenue and that the laws in the state of Maine and the federal laws broadly protect the police from um, uh, being held accountable for their actions. Um, so it goes on here, it says, uh, Maine Tort Claims Act does not immunize government entities and their employees from suits for federal constitutional civil rights violations. However, under federal law, you cannot sue for damages against the state of Maine or its agencies based, based on federal civil rights violations. So I couldn't sue the state, I can only sue the individuals that violated my rights. In addition, under federal immunity doctrine, the main state police officers would be entitled to qualified immunity from any due process or other federal constitutional claims for money damages. The doctrine of qualified immunity shields officials from civil liberty whenever their contact does not violate clearly established statutory or constitutional rights of which any reasonable person would have known. And then it goes on 
to list a number of uh, case law examples of that. And then it says, in short, qualified immunity, qualified immunity broadly protects all but the plainly incompetent or those who knowingly violate the law. Now, this is a little iffy because in my opinion, they did knowingly violate the law, but you have to prove that. And in order to prove that, you have to try to get inside their mind. And uh, uh, that's a pretty high hurdle to overcome. Um, it says, courts, courts routinely dismiss civil rights claims against police officers. Um, and you know this is true because you see it all over the news everywhere. I think the climate is changing now based on the horrible things that are happening, but I think it's a good idea that police all over the country do not let this opportunity to recognize that these horrible things that are happening all over the country are um, the result of a environment that uh, condones and covers for police um, misconduct and outright corruption at all levels. I'm not saying that uh, what's happening is being justified. In fact, I completely reject um, what's happening. And I think that everybody who murder somebody else um, should go to jail and should be punished to the full extent of the law. I'm not saying that at all, but to ignore the opportunity that police and government offices um, all over the country could learn from this experience and from what's happening um, would be a waste of, uh, a waste of an opportunity. Um, goes on to say that Maine's highest court found federal qualified immunity for a Maine state police officer, even though that officer admitted that he repeatedly lied and falsified evidence to obstruct a murder investigation. So that gave an example of an officer that did something far worse than what happened in my case. Um, or maybe I shouldn't say far worse, but at least equal to what happened in my case and uh, the case was dismissed based on qualified immunity. Um, so, and then later on in the letter, it brings up qualified immunity again. And basically the conclusion that um, my law firm uh, came with, and this is the best civil rights law firm in the entire state of Maine. Um, so these are, these people know what they're doing. Uh, and uh, and I had to pay a, a lot of money to get this advice. But basically the conclusion was that I do have a case. It's a good case. I was treated unfairly. However, the chances of winning are kind of low. So if I would be filing this case, I would only be filing it to get in the news, to get public attention, and it would cost me a lot of money. So I decided that rather than spend lots of monies on lawyers and, uh, and, and, and count on the newspaper to maybe or maybe not cover my story, I would take that same money and I would dedicate it to uh, promoting my story on social media, which is far more powerful than news nowadays, as everybody knows. There are more people that get their news on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and, and uh, uh, Google Plus and and uh, Reddit and uh, other uh, blogs and social media like uh, uh, like uh, Before It's News and Cop Block and other places like that, I would spend my or take my resources and, and and just push my story out there to as many of those agencies as I could, so that uh, so that uh, uh, more people potentially would know my story than. Uh, if I had to just file a lawsuit and some local reporters in, uh, you know, Augusta, Maine covered it. And so it showed up in the paper two or three times. And that has proven to be true. The traffic that I've got to my website and to my blog posts and to my other social media accounts, all my social media accounts, ha has improved more 
than I could have ever imagined to the point now where people recognize me. Um, not, I haven't been recognized on the street yet, but people have uh, recognized my, uh, my, they'll find my uh, social media post that I put on one social media site with the name Detective Josh and they'll say, hey, are you Josh Gray from, uh, you know, my Facebook site? Or they'll go on to my, um, uh, my company web uh, uh, Facebook page and they'll say, hey, are you Detective Josh? I've been recognized like that across social media. Um, so people know this story better than I could have ever imagined. And the biggest thing that's happened is other victims of these exact same corrupt troopers, Lieutenant Scott Ireland, uh, Lieutenant Scott Ireland, Detective David Pelletier, <clears throat> Sergeant Michael Johnston, all of these off, uh, officers, other victims of those officers and a few others uh, have come forward and told me their story. And one person brave enough to actually go public with his story was uh, another private detective by the name of Bob Doyon out of, uh, I think, Green, Maine. He also came forward with his story and told about uh, how the same thing happened to him with the exact same troopers. Um, there are, there's so much more to this story that I'd like to make public someday, but for now I'm just going to cut this video off here. Um, Feel free to read over the letter that I just made public on my NSI Surveillance and Investigation Facebook page. Um, I'm also going to put it on LinkedIn and a few other places. Um, feel free to share it. Um, I, I, I love comments. Um, I don't delete any comments, so unless they're vulgar or... Uh, there was recently I had a troll on my Facebook page that for 12 hours straight for three days in a row he just commented replied to everybody's comment and tried to disrupt the conversation with insults and swear words and um, uh, nonsensical rants and ill-conceived conclusions and so I banned him from my company Facebook page um, and when I banned him I think his comments were all deleted or or hidden but I'm, I'm not sure how banning somebody works but I didn't want to ban him. I gave him warnings, but in the end, I, I finally had to ban him. He's the only person I've ever. So I welcome uh, dissent. I want everybody to um, learn about these dirty cops because, in my opinion, um, the only thing worse than a dirty cop is maybe a, uh, uh, a child molester or something like that. But that's, uh, that's my story. Good luck and thanks for watching.